Major funding for the Colotti series was provided by the McCune Foundation. Funding for Listen, Writing the South Valley, provided by the Witter Binner Foundation for Poetry. My mind just screams of dreams that faded like stars slipping into the morning, empty sunlight wandering into an open field of barbed wire and vampires and dreams that never came. Listen, right in the South Valley next on Colores. I can't write a poem about the South Valley. Everybody writes poems about the South Valley. There was Valley Gardens, Los Paul South Side, and the jocks wanted to come in for a little action too. Seven people were killed. I think it is wrong to let the NRA call the shots. Knocking the out his teacher, or, you know, shooting some little kid, blowing his brains out all over. Or... Research. Police officers tried for their roles in the beating. Girls getting pregnant, people just getting drunk, getting high, partying, no one taking anything seriously. Living in a high-tech age is making Americans flabbier and weaker. I know people who are there because they're court-ordered to be in school. It's not that they want to be there to learn. There's more good than bad, in my opinion, and it's just that the media tends to focus more on the bad than the good because it's real grand. Dressed in black trench coats and ski masks open fire in the school cafeteria. It's true we've had we have our fights. It's true we've had the riot and stuff, but there is other schools that have had riots. There's fights everywhere you go. There's gangs everywhere you go. <laughs> So there's no possible way I could write anything about the South Valley that hasn't already been said. I guess that's how I was raised, you know, that uh, mostly Teenagers, they don't got much important stuff to say, you know, it's just endless chatter, I guess. Kids nowadays, they grow up from television and music. Their life revolves around television and music. They don't, their life doesn't revolve around going to church every Sunday and cleaning the yard every Saturday. I can't write a poem about the South Valley. Everybody writes poems about the South Valley. So there's no possible way I could write anything about the South Valley that hasn't already been said. I can't write about the South Valley while in the South Valley, and everybody around me in the South Valley has written something about the South Valley, sometimes excluding the South Valley, about experiences in the South Valley that I can't write about while in the South Valley, writing about the South Valley. It's all the same, guns, violence, hate drugs, complaining about an absolution that'll never come, mothers, fathers, gone, dead, self-pity, the dog that was lost because you were too poor to feed it, homies, brothers, drive-by suicides, Rhyming words that are never meant to rhyme, singing the songs that were never meant to be sung, stealing pagers and cell phones and thinking it was all a bunch of fun, backwards hats and baseball bats, busting glass and missing attacks, religious rituals, burning dolls, running from cops and protesting malls, harassing cops when they harass me first, it's all the same, screaming and kicking dirt, baggy pants and wife beaters, dark sunglasses and Elijah biters. Facial hair that's never there, always wishing you were up there. Hating whites and talking trash, they'll do anything to get the cash. Banging cars, cruising the boulevard, throwing signs to other cars. Teachers complaining about too much noise. Little kids wanting toys. Kids wanting to be adults, adults wanting to be kids. Getting high and going to class. Getting drunk and walking through the glass. Best friends asking for too many favors. Candy that just never gets there. 
girls that say they'll call, sitting there waiting for your call. Beautiful sunsets that look better from the heights. It's not the air, but the observation of sight. Speaking Spanish and crossing over, running through hard times across the border. Students riding all over school, protesting things they don't even understand. Reservations and booming casinos, all the politicians saying they'll change things. Little League and corrupted parents, family trips to the White Sands Desert. Beautiful skies, filled with smoke. It all goes to the valley, don't you know? Things don't change in the South Valley. We only have failed programs. Running through the streets alone, it all really doesn't matter. No one's safe down here. All the crooks get off on technicalities. We all just go with flow with our pens and paper, writing about living in the South Valley. We're here at Rio Grande. It's never gotten too bad to where, you know, teachers are fighting students. It's never got that bad. It's just at that point where, you know, it's on the edge. Yeah, it's on the edge of the road, you know. But it's not bad enough, so no one really takes it that seriously yet. That's why we go through, you know, a new principal every two years. Many teenagers think it's the end of the world when they're pregnant. Many teenagers tend to drop out, stay home, and never go back to school. I think this is not very good because you can go back to school. I, myself, has had a baby, and I went to school, and I finished high school. I finished it, I got up and I got my diploma and I did it for myself, my daughter, and for my family. She's unique. She speaks her own mind. When the round, bright, dead rock comes down to settle, she closes two lids shut, relaxes from all the commotion in one day and waits for the next. She has passion and dreams to achieve. A Chicana, she takes care of a tiny human being that's waiting to bloom. Every day and night, she has to think of one soul, the one that comes first, the little girl. With small hands, I grab the denim and pants, hold me. The big brown eyes of innocence stare out and cry. The eyes that speak the need, love me. If she had to choose to go out or stay home, she stays. To become her inner self, she has to look beyond the criticism of life. Society has bonded a cover for her and disposed the pages to be read. She's a ship that laid out herself to explore the meaning and perceptions of life. The dreams of aspirations may come to a stop and crumble on the damp soil if you don't keep your head up. The little baby girl that was once to be a star or someone in life to make a difference could crash like a comet falling from the sky if you don't keep your head up. Close your ears tightly shut to all the negative and influence based on non-educated minds that crawl around unknowledged. Don't fall into a hole. This is her life. Don't go blind. And remember, keep your head up. I say it could be a positive depending on what point you're looking at it. I say positive because um, having my daughter has made me do real good in my classes and I've settled down a lot since um, before and I stayed out of trouble. It's just everybody's watching TV and they're just sitting there slowly rotting. Okay, so okay. let's try one more time to get my mess there. Okay, cameras up, speed. Oh. Okay, Voices controlled, images patrolled, bad boys, bad boys. Who do you call your god? Does it rest within a four-sided demon? MTV or CBS? Talking, yelling, shouting? A god in a box. Turn down the value, mute. Lock out the world, pretend it's like the movie you all so love on Showtime. Loving husband, beautiful wife, almost perfect children, beauty queen of America, Miss Doubtfire? I think not. Am I watching you with dry eyes, clear eyes? Are you watching me? So much violence, R-rated shows not for children, Beavis and Butthead, South Park, maybe news. Hey, look outside your window, the real world. Regulating box. 
How about real world number five on MTV? Characters playing a part, real world, huh, BS, Bullwinkle show, where's all the drugs, death, and suicidal threats? Sex and blood and perfection. Maybe she's born with it. Reality is blurred. You're still locked up in your box called what? Corruption in a box. Television. Dinner time, family meal, no such thing. There's TV dinners. Kitchen table not called TV table. Is everything in your life based on TV? We are the clay in the potter's scaly hand, made smooth with Luberderm lotion. Burn brains, why do you all wear glasses? Do you sit too close? How would you feel if TV was banned? Would you turn to violence since you have a reason? No TV? Molded by a box. Ha, huh, how about a book? Ever heard of one? You know, you read letters, alphabet. No, not Sesame Street or Barney the Big Purple Dinosaur. Real letters you read. Reserve your mornings, your evenings, your life. Must see, pay tribute to your box. Make children watch PBS. Learn basics. How about a book? Ever seen Matilda? In a daze, performing obeisance. Your life is based around it. I know, I know. You watch the news. Hey, do you pray? To a box. Tell me now, who is your God? Psycho is. Toughest part of being a teenager, making choices, not knowing if they're right. I mean, it's like parents and stuff, they want you to do everything right, and they think it's so easy just because they've already been through it, but we're just starting to go through this, and we learn from every choice we make. My head is tired of thoughts that fall to another world of deserts and failures. I look back and think it wasn't a failure, but I can't remember the details. My mind just screams of dreams that faded like stars slipping into the morning, empty sunlight wandering into an open field of barbed wire and vampires, and dreams that never came. For a while, I thought I had it all. All of it was a shadow drifting through behind the light. This world seems empty today. Devil doesn't want to come outside. Taking some of that insect air, the humidity makes me sit back and listen to my eyes burn. Why won't you come out and play? The floor I keep spinning, or is it my head? My feelings flipped off the edge of that glass, shattering like those broken dreams. All the memories left behind. I can see inside your handful of dirt, your dusty expectations neatly swept under my rug. My carpet's on fire like my eyes again, running from the sun. What it's mainly about is just uh, how I was feeling at the time, you know, real frustrated and like my feelings were being ignored, no one was listening and writing, it just, it's a way to listen to myself and see what I'm really feeling inside. Nationally, kids are violent 61, because, 55. well, they want to make an impression on other people. 78. I mean, because... They're like, if I do this, then they're going to think I'm a badass and they won't mess with me. I don't think it has a whole lot to do with their family life because a parent could, or parents could be really loving and caring for you and you'll still go out and do this just to ch prove a point. In middle school, I was an outcast. I had no friends, not one. People didn't like me because they thought I was weird. What is weird anyway? I still haven't figured it out. 
All of my so-called fellow classmates always made fun of me and told me that I was weird. I always wondered why they thought I was weird. I honestly didn't see a damn thing wrong with myself. I was just fine. I did dress a lot different than them though. The majority of the student body wore baggy attire whereas I wore fitted. I wore bell-bottom pants and shirts with huge sleeves. I was pretty much a hippie kid. Nobody could accept the fact that I was different. I couldn't figure out why people found me strange. Maybe it was the music I listened to. I listened to 60s and 70s rock. I liked the Beatles, Janis Joplin, and Jimi Hendrix. They were all the bands I listened to back in the day. Because I had no friends, I turned to my Walkman Kurt as a companion. My Walkman became my MasterCard. I never left home without it. Music was the only way to shut the world out. When I listened to my headphones, all the bad judgments and comments were quieted. I was in my own little world, a happy world of psychedelic color and peace. I was wanted there. My world was my creation, and all the music artists I loved lived with me. In my eyes, I was a good kid, and my classmates tried hard, too hard, to make me feel bad about who I was. Every day was a struggle to make them see that I wasn't as weird as they thought I was. It seemed to get harder, but I hung in there. Later on, I learned that I wasn't the weird one. Everybody else were the freaky people. Who in their right mind would act and talk and dress the same as everybody else? I sure as hell didn't. I wanted to be me and nobody else. I didn't care what they thought. Why should I care? I learned later on that I'm an individual and all the harassment from others could never take that away from me. When I entered high school, I found all the judgment enforced on me in middle school was gone. Everybody accepted me for who I was and not what I listened to or what I wore, but for me. To this day, now that I'm a senior in high school, I still can't tell you exactly what weird is. survival of the fittest, you know, only the strong survive. And you gotta listen to other people so you can know how to survive this world that we live in. Well, I don't think it's really important to listen to teenagers, you know. We talk all the time. If you listen, it's really up to you. Um, most teenagers don't have a clue. People in general should be heard because everybody has an opinion. And maybe sometimes that's a choice of life or death if somebody's gonna be listening. We're just going through a lot more stuff than anyone thinks, you know. They think, oh, you're just a kid, you're not smart. And, you know, we're trying our hardest. We're learning. Uh, we're adults, you know? We're striving to, to become responsible adults, making money, getting a good job, you know? Staying away from all the negative stuff, you know, gangs, whatever, drugs, all that. The reality is that the gang members will never always be there. The only ones that will really be there for you is your family. We're part of this world too, and as teenagers, um, new minds, new ideas, um, we come up with, we're the future, we are the future, and um, I think we need to get our opinions heard now because later on we're going to be in charge. If society, the nations, the states where the kids are killing kids, the parents of these kids who are killing kids, if they would just listen, then none of this would be going on. Life as a teen is pretty much mm, difficult but you know, we'll get through it, you know what I mean? Just as long as we use our minds. Some people ask me what I'm addicted to in my life. You know, everyone has to be addicted to something. Cleaning, smoking, eating, etc. I look and say, TV, fool. Yeah, that's right, TV. That's my drug, that's my high, so-called way of life. You see, TV's like a crack pipe, a joint, smoking it up, toking it up. TV's like a crack needle, you know, pump pumping into my veins. I love the rush, it gives me different shows, have different effects. Action pack, speed. Scary and terror, cocaine. Comedy, weed, etc. You see, the high lasts for hours as I sit and I sit and I sit and wait for the next show, movie to pop up on the screen. I watch until the red, the black, the blue, green lines pop up on the TV. Oh man, it's all over. So I'll wait until the next show comes on. So when people ask me what my drug is, I say TV. And if you think of TV as a drug, then the nation is involved in illegal abuse of narcotics. So that's my drug, my high, my life. Is it yours? 
Well, this poem's called uh, Brother John, and it goes a little something like this. Brother John, are you sleepy? Are you tired of eating stale bread and commodity pork every morning for breakfast? Are you tired of watching old western movies on PBS in which the Indians never win? Are you tired of seeing your children grow fat off television while their souls starve to death? Or do you feel pain for the lost ones? Brother John, or do you remember when we climbed to the top of that reservation water tower? This land is my land, this land is your land, I sang with my full heart. And you laughed and laughed until it grew out of proportion. This land ain't your land, or this land is a white man's land. And we stood on the edge of that reservation water tower, looking over the very edge, staring at the deadly drop. And we cried and cried until our tears grew tired and left us for good. Does the pain still hurt when you remember it? Brother John, what did you think? Was your mind racing when we stepped into that once lovely forest? The beautiful songs of birds and the small but mighty insects could not be heard. The wet ground reeked of feces and refuge was everywhere. I saw the look on your face. Sorrow and lost hope mixed in with shame, as if your very soul had suddenly escaped and drowned in that dirty black water. Or you ran home screaming, bursting in the door, destroying pictures, clothes, VCRs, trying to hide any signs of your existence, frightened and angry that someone had murdered your mother. Pain will never let you forget. Brother John, your pride suddenly filled your heart when I punched out Big Willie in middle school. Or oh, did he crack a twisted grin when his mouth was filled with my revenge, turning his pearly white teeth red? Or oh, he was crying in the brown dirt, vowing never again to speak against niggers, kikes, swaps, or greasers? And did you stamp your feet in righteous protest when the proper authorities hauled me away? and sentenced me to a life of hardships, or no pain, no gain. Brother John, or did you gaze with mild amazement when I stood bewildered on that hardwood basketball court? Or did you scratch your chin in wonder when I played that beautiful girl a game of one-on-one? -on -one? Or you knew I would never win such a bizarre competition? And did you shake your head in the unfairness of it all when she purposely performed a technical foul? Ripping my heart out, dribbling it around that hardwood court, the noise of the constant pounding sounding like mournful drums, and the absolute silence when she slammed dunk my faith into oblivion. All pain is also called love. Hey, Brother John, did you feel that moment of fleeting happiness as I did? The feeling was unexplainable as I rode that wild Mustang, its hind legs kicking into the empty air, reaching for the unattainable, the wind angry and jealous in my ears. That wild joy did not last long, as that wonderful wild horse shook me from its warm living back and into the cold steel fence. My sense of life was gone, and my blood poured out red and warm. The dry pulverized ground drinking deeply. Oh, I felt pain. Brother John, did you possibly cry when I took my first long pull from that liquor bottle? The world seemed crazy then, tilting at odd angles, chasing away hunger and poverty, racism and hatred, failure and broken dreams. But Brother John, oh, did you cry when I kept returning to that beautiful bottle? When I quenched my social thirst so much it hurt, were those your tears I saw when all the hurting never stopped? All pain comes in many forms, my brother. And brother John, are you sleepy? Well, to tell you the truth, I am a little tired myself. Well, I guess sometimes, I guess you should. I mean, adults, you know, should just kind of look at their kids. If they got any teenagers, just anybody, you know, and just kind of kind of just try to listen to them, you know, because they might be saying something good, you know, that the adults, you know, being adults, they don't see. And, you know, sometimes teenagers, I guess they come up with some pretty good stuff, you know, like, so we got different points of view and 
it's good to get all them points of view together and just, you know, kind of mash them together and kind of look at it, take a step back and, you know, kind of look at it and you'll see maybe something different. A people guided by the fiery loins of a blind man and like sheep we follow as if a spell has been cast over us. Trapped in a cell of freedom, did you touch the hand of freedom? Did you really feel it? A lost dream, a consecrated unity of stripes and states and stars. And oh yeah, the people, surrounded by the deathly fumes of temptation, do you dwell in the land of liberty? Do you pursue the American dream? What a dream, a vain struggle to rise above your neighbor. We exist in this, a fragile, star-studded, masked anarchy.